Well, if it was me or you on it, I don't think we'd be up the front battling with Robbie Fillers, that's for sure. We we'd we'd be lucky to be battling with Ken on his period <laughs> four machine, Braxton. We'd have the aspirations, but I don't think we've got the capabilities at the moment. But uh, Get the A-words mixed why, up. That's why we're up here in the comedy box. But uh, on pole, Laurie Fife, he was a bit of a disappointment there. Something happened and we've got bike number, is that 27 that's been pulled off to the side? It looks like uh, looks like bike number 27, unfortunately. That's uh, Jim Rastakos, who we saw also uh, had some uh, some problems in the, uh, the first race. Obviously, those problems are still existing. The one thing I'm interested to see is if Laurie Fife's been able to make some changes to that machine to maintain the pace, because he certainly fell off in the last couple of laps. Yeah, in the starter's hands. Lights are out there, off and racing. Good start from Robbie Phyllis. Laurie Fife uh, bucking the thing as a mono's away from the start line. A good feel, good start all the way cleanly this time as Robbie Phyllis tips it into uh, turn one for the first time. But Laurie Fife in close proximity. And we'll see where we can uh, pick up Bo Beaton off the second row of the grid where he got a, if he got a decent start this time to really battle for the lead. But I think, Phil, that Robbie Phyllis has got a bit of a point to prove to the younger adversaries in this pattern. Oh, I think he might uh, have a little bit of friendly rivalry with Bo over the weekend now that he knows that uh, he's that fast. But I'll tell you what, one person I did notice get a fantastic start from a little bit further back in the pack was Jason Rumble. And uh, we spoke before about the Freddie Spencer TZ. That's the, uh, the CB900 that's been built by Rex Wolf and has been painted up to look like uh, the Freddie Spencer CB900. So uh, Jason Rumble getting a great start on that uh, number 19 machine back in the pack. Yeah, and look, they're starting to spread out, but look at the gaggle in the middle of from about 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th, 10th, and the rest back to about 20th. They're all uh, in a good line at the moment. As they're battling for positions, just that doesn't matter what. You might have a one-line uh, track in MotoGP, but to try telling that to the Australian Historics is Robbie Phyllis. I think he's put a two-and-a-half-litre Trump uh, Triumph uh, Rocket 3 in that thing. He's just belted off the line. They haven't seen him since. Yeah, Bo Beaton looked like he was back in about fifth place there uh, in a pretty tight pack at the moment uh, and uh, there goes Robbie Phyllis the first lap wheelie out of uh, out of the MG corner and around through the top end of the circuit now look at the style of Mr Superbike sitting in second place it looks like that's uh, the 76 Webster. machine of uh, Scotty Webster on the Moto Martin great to see the uh, the Moto Martin the uh, the French endurance chassis up there as we have another rider uh, pull off at turn four unfortunately Braxy I don't is that the TZ 750 the ex Freddie Spencer Wagon at the moment uh, there at uh, we'll have a look at the numbers no bike number 91 uh, he's uh, retired unhurt from that event uh, but the leaders on their second lap Robbie Phyllis might have gone exit stage left through doing corner with Scotty uh, Webster in second and that was like he was last year Phil he's been up there in front it was a bit strange to see him a bit off the pace in that opening Glen Cameron Australian historic race had just earlier on about half an hour ago but uh, we'll see what we can do with the monitors uh, up here at the moment. We haven't got our timing screens working quite just yet. Uh, but this is the battle. There's Robbie Phyllis. Then it's Scotty Webster. Then bike number 86. Bo beating up the third, trying around the outside. How hard on the brakes there. You see the front end shaking as he's trying to pull the thing up. I was going to say, Scotty Webster left his brake into the last minute. And Bo Beaton still cruised in and went around the outside of him. And... Uh that's a That's great performance from Bo Beaton to, uh, to get on that Irving Vincent. There's the number 19 machine painted up in the Freddie, uh, Freddie Spencer uh, colours. And uh, as we said, the rider of that machine on bike number uh, 19, Jason, Jason Rumble. Rumble, done a fantastic job. And he's also uh, sponsored by Capricorn Body Art. Braxy, yeah, so, well, have uh, you seen Jason Rumble? You'd wonder why he is sponsored by it. There's not much uh, clear skin left on that body, that's for sure. But a really nice guy, and a Freddie Spencer, a tragic to say the least. But the Moto Martin has been relegated to third as Bo Beaton takes the Irving Vincent in the second spot. On their second lap, there'll be four to go at the end of this one. Can they? Where's Robbie Phyllis? He's just disappeared into the distance at the moment. But Bo Beaton, I assure you, will be trying his hardest to try and pull him in. And I'm just trying to say, there's Robbie Phyllis. He's got about a 200-metre lead over Bo Beaton on the Irving Vincent. I know Robbie Phyllis's attitude. He's just going to go, I'm going to pull the pin, and if you can try and catch me, then we'll have a battle. That's exactly what he's done, too, in uh, the first three laps. He's put down three sensational laps, Braxy, and uh, I think the biggest thing is now is, is Bo Beaton... Can he get some clear track? Can he get far enough ahead of Scotty Webster to be able to have that clear track? Because at the moment, he's got to take some defensive lines because he knows the man that always, and when I say always, I mean every single meeting at Phillip Island rises to the occasion. I think it must be the Cocoa Pops he has for breakfast. <laughs> Isn't that the Cocoa Pops? What does he put in it? That sugar really gets him going. But look at the body language of Bo Beaton on this Irving Vincent. 
under the screen as he hard on the brakes. You see the back end braking traction as he tries to tip it in at the last possible moment. Lowy oh. uh, Fife, there's something coming out of that bike at the moment. Bikes behind him trying to get around. I'm sure he'll get the flag to pull in. Bike number 26, there it is, trying to find the lead. That was Keith Higgs on his ballistic Kawasaki. But I don't know what that... Did you see what was yeah, coming off? Yeah, it was off, uh, um, Sparks or something or other. It looked very strange there as uh, Laurie came down into turn four on that occasion. Was that a loose cannon? It could have been. It could have been a cannonball dropping off the side of the uh, off the, the loose cannon's machine. The entertaining battle at the moment, though, is that one that you mentioned about Keith Higgs in very uh, close proximity to Jason Patterson, who has probably got the biggest cheerleader crew here this weekend. Look at... Oh, Scotty Webster again. That's leaving your braking to the last minute. And as we yes. see Laurie Fife blowing things out, the exhaust of that uh, <laughs> that's GSXR. His that's his baffling disappearance. It was his baffling. <laughs> <laughs> He's baffled himself like we are up here as uh, Robbie Phyllis comes past the complete lap number three. This will be the half race distance. We haven't got the time up here, but we know that he'd have about a two or three second lead. But Bo Beaton has closed right up. We're in for one hell of a duel for these final.